Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the role and responsibilities of cloud service providers. What do cloud service providers do? They're companies that offer a range of services relating to computing, storage, networking, analytics, and application on the internet. What we mean by the on, on the internet and the cloud. Well, how does it work? So rather than, so let's, let's start with just storing files, storage. So rather than storing your files in your office, at your computer office, what you will do is you will store your files in the cloud with a third party and you will be able to access those files through the internet. Same thing with your software application. So rather than have Word, Excel, and all the other software application residing on your laptop, residing on your desktop at work, what you can do, the software itself, they would reside in the cloud and you will use them. The same concept applied to networking, other application and other computing power. So that's the basic idea. The main players in this field are Amazon Web Services, AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud. Notice all the big names are involved in the service because it's an area that's only growing and that's why it's tested on the CPA exam, IBM Cloud, Oracle Cloud, Alibaba Cloud, and you could name many other companies of smaller size, they do have a cloud. So that's their role, that's what they do. So customers can access resources on a pay-as-you-go basis, which is great. In other words, small business owners, such as myself and other, many, and other people, they don't have to invest in the infrastructure, in the IT infrastructure that's necessary to run a modern company. What would you do? You'll just rent those services. If you need to scale up, you will pay more. Well, if things don't go your way, you need to scale down, you pay less. You would ask for less storage, less, less applications. In this session specifically, we're going to be looking at the responsibilities of cloud service providers. Simply put, if you are a user, if you are a business person advising a business, we're going to look at it from that perspective as a CPA. What would you look for? What type of responsibilities you would expect the cloud service providers to provide? This is what we will discuss in this session. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So we're gonna break the responsibilities into the following areas. Infrastructure maintenance, data security, service availability, backup and recovery, customer support and issue resolution, compliance and legal obligation, innovations and update. Well, obviously there's a list and what do we do at Farhat Lectures? Every time there's a list, we go through each list separately, starting with infrastructure maintenance. And that's an obvious in a sense that you would expect them to maintain their infrastructure. Why? Because other people's rely on them. So they need to have a hardware maintenance. Well, how, how, would they, how would they translate that? Well, regular inspection, conducting routine inspection of servers, storage devices, networking equipment, and other hardware to identify any anomalies, wear on tear in their equipment. They will need to upgrade and replace old equipment on a regular basis, periodically, to ensure optimal performance because old assets or old equipment may not run like new equipment replacing faulty or outdated hardware to prevent failures. They also need to maintain their software. Patch management. What's a patch management? Regularly updating software, operating system, and application with the latest patches to address vulnerabilities and bugs. And we'll look at patch management maybe in a separate recording as well. Software upgrade. Well, when there's a software upgrade, you implement this upgrade to leverage advanced features and improvement. Also, you want a configuration management, which is optimizing software configuration to assure smooth, stable performance as well. Also, since you have network infrastructure, you want to make sure your network is maintained properly, continuously observing network performance and traffic to identify and resolve any issues. Here what comes when it comes especially to security, optimizing your network. 
on a regular basis, refining network configuration topologies to ensure optimal performance and reliability, smooth performance. And obviously, network deals with security, implementing and maintaining firewalls. We talked about firewalls in a separate recording. Well, also cloud service companies, they have to have a, they have to have a firewall, intrusion detection and prevention system, IDS and IPSs, and other security measures to safeguard network and infrastructure. Cloud service companies are just simply companies. Just like you have to maintain your security, if they have a network, they have to maintain the security of their network as well. That's basically, you'd say, of course, they have to maintain their system. Data security, that's very important for them. Why? Because the reason why you're relying on them, for one thing, they are secure. And you say it's safer. Sometimes sometime you would use cloud only for security purposes, just to have your files there for security. So data security is the core responsibilities of cloud service providers. It involves the protection of data, application and infrastructure from unauthorized access, attacks and data breaches. That's an obvious one. Implementation and management, well, they have they gotta use encryptions and we talked about encryption in a separate recording. CSPs encrypt data at rest and in transit, employing advanced cryptographic techniques to protect sensitive information. We talked about encryption in a separate recording. They also have to implement this access control. Providers implement stringent access control. Not everyone can go in and out, ensuring that only authorized individual can access sensitive resources and data. And that's very important for them because for the cloud service, they have to give access to many different companies, many different individuals. So they have to be very careful on how they provide this. Obviously, we talked about firewalls and intrusion detection systems as part of their maintenance. That's also part of their data security. It's used to monitor and block malicious traffic and potential threats. Security compliance, providers adhere to various industry standards, regulations such as GDPR, HIPAA, ISO 27001 to ensure data production and privacy. And we'll talk about all of those in a separate recording as well. Just make sure you know they have to be in compliance with security procedures for privacy purposes. Regular audit on a regular basis, audit their security system. Security audit are conducted to identify weaknesses and mitigate any issues service availability now security is great but also we want to make sure we want as 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 clients of those cloud services we have access to our information so service availability is crucial for maintaining the continuity of services provided by the cloud service providers because if i am if i am if i am putting my information on your system i'm relying on your availability for my availability so it's typically covered, governed by something called service level agreement, SLA, which outlines the expected level of service availability. Usually it's expressed as 99.99% were going to be available. They cannot say 100% because nothing is for sure, but usually they would have a service availability. Now, how would they implement and make sure they have service availability? They have a redundancy system. Multiple servers, so if one fails, the information is on the other servers. Various data centers and network paths that are used to ensure continuous service availability, even if one component fails. Another way is load balancing. So if they have a lot of traffic all at the same time, they can they have a system to distribute the traffic, the various network across multiple servers. So this way, no single server will be overwhelmed. Also, they have to monitor this process, continuous monitoring of services and infrastructure to kind of detect and resolve any issues immediately if there's no service. Incident response, having predefined procedures for anything that's, there's a red flag, yellow flag, whatever, whatever it is, flag it, take care of it to minimize downtime, be proactive. Disaster recovery planning, of course, they have to have something like this, creating and implementing plan to recover services quickly in event of a disaster. And this is what we'll talk about next. So it's part of their service availability, but also backup and recovery. That's also crucial for uh, data security backup and recovery. Those are important for cloud service providers. They're essential for safeguarding data against loss, deletion, corruption, or security incident. And that's why I have my information on Google. I believe Google protect my information that I can protect my information on Google Drive or OneDrive. That's the reason. Therefore, Google Drive and OneDrive, they have to back up my information in case something happened because I'm relying on them. That's their job. That's their specialty in that sense. It helps in restoring data to its original state in case of an adversity. How do they do that? Regular backup. 
performing regular backup of data applications and configuration. They will have offsite storage, so you don't have to worry about say, having stuff in your own company at your own storage. Storage backup data and geographical separate, dispersed separate location from the primary data center to protect against fire, flood, local disasters. Data retention policies, implementing policies governing how long backup is retained, depending on regulatory requirement and obviously business need. Testing, they will need to test their backup. Regularly test and backup and recovery process to ensure that data can be restored automatically and promptly. And user-driven backup and recovery, providing options for users to initiate backup and recovery data as needed, offering more flexibility and control. But here you have to be careful about giving access points. So you have to be very careful. Also, cloud service providers, they do have to have a good customer service support and issue resolution, just like any other company, providing assistance to customer experiencing issues with services and resolving their questions or queries. They have to have incident management, addressing and resolving incident effect in service availability or performance or performance on a timely basis. Also, they have to have some sort of a cost management. I, I put it under customer support, I believe, offering transparent pricing, helping customer to manage and optimize cost. Because when you are paying for those cloud services, oftentimes it depends on the size, how much do you need? Therefore, you want to kind of be transparent, like don't quote $500, and you think it's $500, and you don't tell them once you exceed a certain point, it goes from 500 to 5,000. You wanna be transparent, and that's part of customer support, customer transparency. Compliance and legal obligation, that's also a major one. Adhering to relevant laws, regulation, industry standard related to data protection and privacy, such as HIPAA, GDRP, in case there is a compliance audit, ensuring the infrastructure adheres to legal and regulatory standards. So if you're in the health industry, you could be audited by the health department. You wanna make sure the cloud service is also in compliance related to data protection, privacy, and other industries as well. Again, we're going to talk about HIPAA and GDRP in separate recording. Legal liaison, keeping abreast with the changing legal landscape, keeping on top of legal issues and aligning infrastructure maintenance strategies accordingly. What else would you expect from cloud service providers? Innovations and updates. On a regular basis, update their services, introducing new features and technologies to more to meet evolving customer needs, especially in technology, it's constantly changing. How do they do that? R&D, research and development. They should provide and allocate substantial amount of their revenue to R&D to create innovative solution and stay ahead of the competition. Emergent technology, they should have a team exploring emergent technologies, quantum computing, edge computing, AI to develop, to develop new services, and improve existing one. And this is a big one these days. For example, for gaming, you might need AI, for other services, for, for service diversification, so on and so forth. Service improvement and optimization, new features are developed and introduced to meet the need and the use of the customers. Innovation aimed at improving the user interface and overall user experience. User experience, you wanna improve that on a regular basis. And if, under innovation and update, you could have many things. You could have sustainability innovations, which is called, one of it is green computing, which is the development and adoption of energy efficient technologies and practices to reduce environmental impact, which is basically using renewable energy to power your data centers and other, other infrastructure. You could have user-centric innovations, basically some sort of a customization, developing new ways for users to customize services accordingly to their specific needs. You could have accessibility issues, innovating to make services more accessible even with people with disability, ensuring inclusivity. And there's longer list here about innovations and update. You can go on and on. But just to give you an idea, what do you expect from cloud service provider? Let's take a look at this MCQ from Farhat Lectures. An e-commerce company is assessing its data recovery options with a cloud service provider. That's their concern, they're assessing. So our data is very important, so in case something happened. What is crucial for safeguarding data against loss and enabling the restoration, the data to its original state? Is it data encryption? Is it load balancing? Is it regular update? Is it network optimization? Well, what do you have to know here is the definition for each, and I hope you do. What is data encryption? Data encryption is protecting data from unauthorized access. 
okay this is data encryption you don't want somebody to access the data and if they did access it they cannot read it it's encrypted that's not data recovery it's not data recovery well your concern here is if they find it they cannot read it that's data encryption that's out load balancing what is load balancing load balancing is basically when the system is overwhelmed one one network one network of the system is overwhelmed one server is overwhelmed what you do is you have a system that's that's going to spread the load spread the traffic over various multiple networks and servers that's not has nothing to do with data recovery b is out and network optimization kind of similar to d basically making sure your network is working at optimal level um, kind of similar also here you're talking about the configuration of the network the topology for optimal performance kind of similar but doesn't have to be the same so d is also out and regular backup i would say it's kind of backup will kind of give you a hint hopefully if you know any if you don't know anything backup and recovery kind of the same thing so regular backup if that's your concern you want to assess how often do they back up their system i'll tell you something about my company recently i've been i've been moving to a new learning management system and basically i built 95 percent of the data i inputted all the multiple choice such as this one that you are looking at then then suddenly one day i, I went into i went into the system to add more questions and i could not find any zero so 95 percent of the work was gone well obviously i was very upset afraid angry whatever so i called the i called my uh, webmaster he said don't worry we have everything back up on a system so the system was crashed so they have a backup system they went back 24 hours they loaded everything and i kept going why because data recovery is important here so therefore if the company does regular backup maybe on a daily basis sometime on an hourly basis in financial institution on minute by minute basis depending on your business but regular backup would be your concern here what should you do now you got to go to farhat lectures look at additional mcqs additional resources that's going to help you understand these concepts better studying for your cpa exam is a long-term investment it's worth it it's 20 30 40 year investment in your life don't shortchange yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe